No one cares about you. No one. All of you here, you might be in the crowd like, hmm, what are the people thinking of me? Or are they staring at the back of my head? The people behind me? No one cares. Even right now in this seminar, you've all been sitting here listening to me. Do you remember everything that I've talked about? No. How much have you already forgotten? Probably a lot. Do you notice every face around you? No. How far does the average person see? This far. For real. You're walking down the street, you see this far. Do you look across the street to see the other people walking? No. More often than not, well, my phone's over there. You're on your phone even. You don't even see that far. You're just like, enough to see where my next step is. That's it. You don't look around you. And even if you do, it's NPCs. They're irrelevant. It's background characters to your movie. For real, it's the Matrix. You don't notice all that because you're living in the movie of you where you're at the center. Other people, it's the same. You right now, you're filtering everything through your eyes. What's your name? Hector. Hector. You're like, I am Hector, and this is the movie of Hector. And I'm sitting here, and now Julian is pointing at me. No one, everyone else, NPCs, filling up this moment, filling up this scene. Thank you, background characters, for being here for Hector's experience. <laughs> That's how your mind interprets it. How's my mind interpret it? I am here. I am Julian. I am giving a speech. And you are the NPCs filling the chair. It's like if we're about to film a movie, it's like, okay, so the scene is, uh, there's a speech, Julian, you're gonna go up front, we hired a bunch of background characters, we're gonna sit in the crowd, and they'll just clap when they see a little sign saying clap. <laughs> All right, thank you, NPCs, background characters. Everyone does this. The person working at the coffee shop when you get your coffee, again, I worked at a coffee shop, what are they thinking? They don't remember you. They're like, oh, did I say my order correctly? Did I look confident? Do they understand my name? It's, it's Julie N with an N. It's not Julie or Julia. They forget. They don't care. You're an NPC. The same with childhood friends. Oh my, those high school friends of mine who might have bullied me, who didn't see the glory I had inside. I'll show them. I used to think that way. Guess what? Moving from Switzerland to LA, when I finally started doing public speaking gigs, traveling around, right? Like 2010, 12 years ago now. Um, I remember on Facebook, I had like my personal Facebook and I'd post pictures of different seminars or even little video clips. And I would always think, ah, oh, look at that crowd. Looks pretty big. <laughs> look at me now. Every nerd's dream, right? Every nerd, again, I was not popular at all. Every little shy nerd, talk to anyone in high school, it's like, oh, Julian, like, I was like, one day I'll show them. Imagine, like you finally not only are expressive and confident, but then you have these big crowds and you're blasting them on Facebook, you're touring around the world. Look at me now. And I thought this would be the glorious moment of my life where they'll see those pictures and the comments will be, oh my gosh, look how much he's changed. <gasps> and they'd be blown away and I'd be getting messages. We're so sorry for ever doubting you. You're the big boss now, big daddy. What happened? No one cared. No one. Why? Because they are busy with their own lives. They don't care. They're like, and even if I were to be like, do you remember how you bullied me in school? Look at me. They're like, I bullied you in school. I don't even remember you. <laughs> no one cares. And this, funny enough, is how most people live their lives, by the way. It's like we're adults, but internally we're still the little high schooler trying to become one of the cool kids. Right? It's like, hey, when I get my social skills, I'll be the cool kid. Look at me now. When I get a cool relationship, when I get the money, look at me now. No one's looking at you. There is none of this look at me now. No one cares about you. For real. No one. Even me, you might think you care to some extent. You care in terms of what has value to you. But say I were to die right now, would you really think about me? Yeah. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> uh, you ever see, this is on Instagram, it was Betty White passed away. 
Has she accomplished more than me? She has. She has. She's lived longer, too. So it's not over, Betty. <laughs> How often do you think about her? You don't. So she's accomplished that much, and no one thinks about her. Why would they think about you? No one does. Even your loved ones, they will occasionally, but they'll forget pretty fast. Now that's death. Think of, during your life, little successes you have. No one really cares. No one. So if you're living to do it for others, again, living through the eyes of others, one day, am I the high school kid? You're chasing phantoms. If you ask yourself, what if no one cared about me? Which, for most people, can be interpreted as a very negative, sad thought. It's like, well, no one cares. Oh, no. But it's also very freeing in a way. Meaning, huh, if no one cares and I just had to do it for me, what would I do? Not just that, but I'm sure you've noticed nowadays how short people's attention spans are. Most people can't sit through a 15-second Instagram story. It's already too long. You're going through the stories, you'll watch a few seconds, next, 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 next. You don't sit through the whole thing, you're like, oh, this is so long, 15 seconds. Get to the point. Same with TikTok, scroll, 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 scroll. Open a YouTube video, start it for a few seconds, like, mm, let me skim through it a bit, let me open up their tabs. You're watching a movie, I can't watch a movie without being on my phone at the same time. <laughs> Gotta be on my phone too, it's too boring if it's just the movie. It's crazy. So attention spans are so low, we forget so much, we are getting dumber and dumber. If you watch the movie Idiocracy, this is reality now, right? Used to be a joke pre-Trump with the president. No, it's reality. Celebrity president. It's like we're, we're in, in this insane dumbness. I see it in the people I talk to. I see it in clients. People are getting dumber and dumber and dumber and dumber. And it's not just, you're like, well, it's the young people with their TikTok. It's old people too. Everyone's getting dumber. I'm getting dumber too. We're all getting dumber. It's the conditioning. We're not all getting dumber. Except for you. The one person who's getting smarter. Hell yeah. I'm, I'm improving every day. Good for you. We all aspire to be like you, but unfortunately us mere mortals are getting dumber because the pull of society and the conditioning is very strong. You can fight against it, of course, but the world is getting dumber. Now what that means for you, and this is the good news, is that people are too dumb to remember you. They're too dumb, dumb to judge you. Even if you do something crazy, they'll forget about it tomorrow because they're getting dumber and there's more and more stimulus and more and more craziness thrown in their face, especially if they're following the news, especially if they're on social media. Right? We talked about the example before. You're in line at a Starbucks. Sing a song. Oh, what will other people think of me? They won't. They will not think about you. Maybe in the moment they'll be like, huh, back to the movie of me. You're not their main character. You're not the hero. You're your own hero. They're like, what's that NPC doing? <laughs> back to me. And even if they were to actually notice and be like, oh my gosh, singing in a Starbucks, then they'll open their phone and there'll be some crazy news. Another crypto crash. Oh, you think you're competing with that? You're thinking, oh, the singing in the Starbucks. They don't care. So it's freeing. It's absolutely freeing. I actually remember, and you could use this example as a counter argument in a way. This was um, many years ago in LA. I was driving, it was uh, La Brea and Sunset. And I was gonna turn and this person ran in the street naked, full nude, a guy, long hair, just whipping it out. And he started jumping up on different cars. The only reason I still think of him is, is an example. <laughs> but literally, what was my reaction? Oh, okay. <laughs> that was it. That's, now, does it mean go do this? Of course not, common sense. But if you could do something that crazy and it's like, eh, next, it means you're free. No one cares about you. You are a background character, and it is very freeing. Right, I was, uh, another way of viewing it, and I talk about this way, is um, we tend to live as if we're a, an A-list celebrity or actor, right? It's like you're, you're Brad Pitt, you're Ryan Gosling, you're Sandra Bullock, you're whatever, you're like the main person, all eyes are on you. But with that, for example, say they're on set at the movie, can they fart? Yes or no? Yes. No, because all eyes are on them. So there's a lot of pressure. They're holding it in for their acting. What about the background character in the back? The extra, who's just like, just sit and, uh, and sip your water in the background of the restaurant. They can fart away, no one notices. You're the background character to everyone else's movie. You can fart away and no one will notice. They might smell it, but they won't notice. So it's freeing. 
So remember that. What do people think? You're not a celebrity. Stop being so narcissistic. Stop thinking the world revolves around you. You are a nobody. Everyone will forget you. Their attention spans are so short. Freeing. Beyond that, in terms of what they even think of you, realize that no one can approve or disapprove of you because they don't know you. No one knows you. Even your closest loved ones do not know you because they are not you. Does anyone know you as well as you know yourself? No, because they haven't been you. They haven't experienced it. Only you know you. So whose opinion of you is more important? Someone who knows you the most or someone who knows you a little? The most. If I were to give you my opinion on how, how to make this computer, do I know anything about it? No. Would you take my opinion seriously? No. I hope not. Let me give you my opinion on the new uh, Mac chip here. This is what I think. You'd be like, fuck off with your opinion. You know fuck all about it. It's just speculation. Same here. You're all watching me. Do any of you know me? No. You know the vision of me that you have in your mind, the preconditioned image, the experience of me you had here so far, but none of you know me. You don't know what music I like, you don't know what movies I like, you don't know what I'm like to just hang out with. You don't know the behind the scenes, you don't know what my family life's like, you know nothing about me. So why does your opinion matter? It doesn't. It's just speculation, you're projecting onto me. A good exercise too is look at the people around you. Look at three people around you right now. Just a quick glance. Pick three in your mind, okay? Now, in your mind without telling them, do not tell them, who's the person out of the three that you like the least? <laughs> Pick one, right? Say they were all hanging on a cliff, you could only save two. <laughs> now, ask yourself why. Why did that person stand out? And you're allowed to even get a little negative, indulge in those thoughts. Like, why do you like that person the least? And it doesn't even have to make sense. It could be like, well, their face and their smug look. They probably come from a privileged family. They think they're better than me, blah, blah, blah. They remind me of my high school bully. Like, the whole story comes out. And funny enough, I do this exercise sometimes during live events, Transformation Mastery Live, where it's in different groups. So you'll do this at first. You don't tell anyone. And through the event, you get to know your group a lot better, especially the stuff beneath the surface, the issues, the struggles. And halfway through the event, I pause. I'm like, okay, look at your group. Remind yourself of that first exercise, what you thought of that person versus now that you know them better. Was your perception accurate, yes or no? And 99% of the time, it's completely off. And then you realize, wow, all that came from me, me projecting onto them. I knew nothing about them. Maybe the way they talked triggered something that reminded me of this thing that happened to me. And then you project all that. Oh, maybe their tonality. Oh, maybe Julia not answering the Mormon question. What an asshole. Fuck him. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> right? But again, it's all speculation. It's crazy. So understanding that, you realize like no one can approve or disapprove, only you. You have the final say because you know you. So stop trying to find yourself. It's like, if I'm an expert in building a computer, why would I go to people who have no idea what a computer is? I'm like, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Do you like it? Please tell me you approve of it. You'd be like, what are you doing? You're insane. That's, that, that's, that's what we all do. So if no one can approve or disapprove, free. Your opinion is all. Everything else, no expert. Don't take it seriously. Now again, you could also take this the wrong way where you're like ignoring all feedback. No. Don't be blind to it, and this is the next step beyond that. It's still being aware of social feedback, but not getting triggered by it, just taking the data. This is very important, by the way. Someone who's very ego run will be closed off to feedback because it hurts their winner effect, it hurts their ego. So it's like, I'm being me, but they're very closed off. True confidence is, I don't seek my self-worth in who I am and others, but I'm still aware of it. So I can still receive feedback and adjust without it affecting who I am. Get it? That's the key difference. The last external thing, which we talked about briefly before, is learning how to laugh at yourself too. Don't take yourself too seriously. View everything as just funny. You can even zoom out and say, what if you're this character in this comedy movie? Would you laugh at the experiences you're going through? Yes. Would you enjoy it? Would you be captivated by it? Yes. And life's not that heavy. Life's not that serious.
embrace it, laugh your way through it, right? And your experience of something stressful changes too when you take that approach, by the way. The example I've given for years is, if you've watched the show Friends, there's this scene where Ross goes into the bathroom and he's wearing these tight leather pants. And he takes them off, right? Yeah, everyone remembers that scene. So he takes off the pants and he can't get them back because they're so tight and he starts putting powder and the powder goes all over the pants. It's this whole crazy, like stressful scene. If you take that experience through the eyes of Ross, is it stressful, scary, and heavy? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. If you take it through the eyes of the viewer, you watching this on TV, do you experience it the same way as he does? No, no you're chuckling, you're laughing, you're still cringing a bit. It's like, well, you, you recognize the emotion, but the experience shifts completely. You're less attached. Same here with your life. Oh, what if I sing in the Starbucks and people stare? We'll zoom out, what if it's Ross singing? Live your life as if you're also watching yourself in the movie and laugh at it. Changes the experience completely.